Welcome back. Now we're ready for part four of our series on designing printed circuit boards. In this part, we're going to take a look at routing those paths. We'll talk about adding vias so that we can move connections from one side of the board to the other. We'll also spend a little time talking about how we can add text and graphics to the board. We'll upload some images and add them to the printed circuit board. But first, here's this from our sponsor. I think I'd like to zoom in here now and clean up this area a little bit in here. I'm not happy with the way this is coming out. For one, I've got a header here that's not even on the printed circuit board and I need to make room for it. One of my goals is to try and get all of the solder joints to be behind these two panels so that when we're looking at the bottom side of the board we won't see a lot of solder nubs. I'm going to try to hide them underneath here. The goal would be to take this header and get it inside here somewhere where it is going to be hiding behind this thing but things are a little crowded in here i think i'll do some moving of stuff uh, we've got all these lines coming out of here that we've got to sort out as well it's a lot of crossovers one of the things that you can do is you uh, select your printed circuit board and then in the view menu you can I guess it's in the routing menu you can do the design rule check and it will go look at your board and it's going to find all the problems that you have things that you're going to need to deal with and it marks them in red so that you can figure out how you want to go about correcting these things so let's see right here it would be easy to just take this and bring it to the top and then uh, you'll watch if I redo this this check that red part there is gone okay and we have a another issue over here this guy that's going through here we we don't need to bump into that if I can get a hold of no let's see I might have to move this out of the way in order to grab that corner. Let's get him out of the way for now. I'm going to run it on the inside. We'll put this one back. We'll go ahead back to high speed and I will work on cleaning up some of this mess in here. notice how I moved this one trace over and underneath all these resistors that's a technique that you can use and we'll probably use a lot as we put things and hide things under components so we don't have to worry about crossing lines I think what we need to do now is start talking about vias and how we use them because there are so many traces connecting so many things at opposite sides of the board here it's a bit challenging to run all these lines without getting these crossover. Let me do the check again, design rule check, and I'll show you in this area in particular, right here, we get this off to the side, but all of these red marks in here are all places where traces are shorting each other out, and we have to address this, we have to get rid of all of them. The technique that I'm going to use is a little simple thing of let's run our horizontal lines uh, on the top of the board and we'll run the vertical lines on the bottom of the board so you see if we have this line right here that's running mostly vertical and we move it to the bottom of the board and now I'll just repeat this rule check you'll see that we eliminated some of those errors there just to give you an example of how that might work creating a via is pretty simple I'll come over here take this bend point right here I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna select convert bend point to via and then I can take this trace right here and move it to the top 
and we're all set up. Now let's do this one here. I'll right click on that, convert it to a via, and then I'll take this line right here and move it to the bottom. Just like that. Take a look at this one here where R8 comes over here and you follow these dots. It comes over here and it goes down to E on this side and then it also splits off and goes to the E on the other panel. So you see it, it's going in two directions there. We seem to have an extra bend point down there that we don't need. Remove that bend point. So it's just a straight line there. So I'll show you a trick then. We can use a via to make this T connection. You see if I move this over there we have these two traces that are actually tied together. We'll, we'll tie them together in here. Watch this. I'll take this bend point right here, convert it to a via, and I'm going to take this line right here and I'm going to delete it up to the bend points and we'll connect this guy to the via. We can move this line which is vertical to the bottom layer and we are just about ready here. Now I'll go ahead and do that with some more of these. Now it's time to pull in some of these traces that are outside the boundary of our board. The ones that run the full length, uh, mostly between our two headers on the end. Let's see if we can sort those out. Well, this is starting to look pretty good here. We've got all of our traces on the board. We need to now check for any more errors. We'll go up and run our design rule check. And let it run. Oh, look at here. Your sketch is ready for production. There are no connectors or traces that overlap or are too close together. So, we, we've sorted that all out. That's, that's a good thing to know. Now, that doesn't mean we've got everything right. We still need to double check our circuits and make sure that everything is going where it's supposed to go. I'm also going to need to add some holes to these PCBs so that we can put some fasteners on it. Things like that. So, uh, we start putting holes in the corners of these boards some of those traces are going to have to move. In order to check things out, I think the first thing I want to do is double check that these four headers are linked together the way they're supposed to. That when I click on the A over here, it's going to go clear over to the A over there. Let's zoom in a little bit here to where we can see this a little better. And just real quick, we'll go through this. Here's A, and it links to the other A. B links to the other B, C to C, D to D, E to E, F to F, and our decimal point to our decimal point. Okay, that's pretty good. I think I'll maybe just reposition the silk screen a little bit. Things have gotten shifted, but that's okay. Now, let's work on these resistors. All of the resistors 
on this board are the exact same value. They are all current limiting resistors, and there's no reason for us to label them R1, R2, R3, R4, or anything like that, because they're all the same value. I, I think what I'd like to do is label them according to the segment that they are driving. If we want to know where our A segment is, we can follow it backwards. So we'll go from A here to this resistor, which I'm going to relabel A. And uh, maybe I'll just set that over here and rotate it. And then if we follow it back, it comes over to this one should be Q0 and it is Q0 that's good it went to the right place so we know that's good now we can do the same thing with B B goes all the way around and up to this resistor here which I'll rename B and I think I'll rotate it and we'll reposition it in in here so that one checks out and it should go then to Q1 there it is Q1 okay now that's done let's do a double check on here going the opposite direction I've labeled all of the resistors with the letter of the seventh segment LED that it corresponds to. I got thrown for a little bit of a loop here. I did a little bit of a crossover in here uh, in order to make it easier to trace from the, this resistor to the F terminal. Um, I moved it up here. It, you know, instead of having it down in here, then having to get all all the way out and up, it seemed easier to put it there, and so it's worked out quite well. So if we work our way around our shift register, if I start here with Q0, this should go through our A resistor to our A terminal. And then we come over here, this is Q1, it goes through our B resistor up to the B. This should go to the C, over to the C terminal. This should go to the D resistor, over to the D terminal pin. This should go to the E resistor, down to the E terminal pin. This should go to the F resistor, which is up here, over to the F terminal pin. This should go to G, over to the G terminal. It gets there. It's going both directions. It splits here and it takes off there. A little different than the way the others were set up. And then the decimal point. And the decimal point goes to the decimal point resistor and down to the decimal point terminal. So that takes care of this, of the seven segments and the decimal point. Let's go over to the other side of the board. Let's take care of those cathodes that, remember, they control each individual digit. So let's slide on over. We'll do somewhat the same thing here. We need to find the Q0 pin on our IC, and there it is right there, the Q0. You see it goes up to cathode 1. Now we switch over to the other side, and uh, this one should go to cathode 2. It does. This goes to cathode 3. It does. This goes to cathode 4, which is down there. That's good. Now we got to get over and see the, the other. So we'll bring that into play there. And we need to find out where did we leave off. Okay, this should go to 5. Yep, 5 is lit up over there. Now 6. 6 lights up. Now 7. 7 lights up. And finally, eight. Eight lights up right there. So all of the anodes and all of the cathodes appear to be wired correctly on our PCB. 
so that's good news but that doesn't solve everything we still have to get the data in so let's go over now and see if we can't clean this up in this area here add some labeling and I need to make some more space just for my labels so I'm going to go up a notch and let's crowd this a little bit uh, it probably means that we're going to have to make a few minor changes to some things in this area but we can do that I think I can also take this piece and move it a little bit there that means these can come down a nudge like that now we'll take this guy and it's just too large so I'm just going to resize it by simply grabbing a corner here bring it down a little smaller that looks pretty good in there it's a three letter tag and I'm going to need room for a four letter tag so I'm going to make it smaller still we'll call that clock and I'm going to now duplicate this and we'll bring this one into the second position here now let's go see who this is okay this is the latch see where it says latch pin so we will change that label to be latch I just go LTCH and I'm going to duplicate him again I'm using control D and this guy will come down here and that's a good thing let's put them on the other side too now I'm just gonna highlight these guys one more time holding control down and I'll touch on each one of these and I'm gonna get them all so there I got all five of them and now I'll just show you here I can duplicate and there's a whole new set of them we can now test that these are going to the right places our clock comes down here and goes to the clock pin here that's nice the latch comes down here and that should be latch pin that's good this should go to ground and I believe that's ground this should be our data pin oh the data pin is different we'll come back to it the 5 volts will check and it should just go right here to VCC and it does positive supply this data pin here goes all the way over to the data pin that we saw there because we're pulsing only U1 we have a pin on U1 that should come back to the data pin over here which is the overflow and it would be I believe is it right here yeah that's our serial out pin and so if I click here it goes all the way back over there to what should be our data pin there so that's good that's that's all looking good so now let's see we did some messing around in here we were moving stuff let's go double check our uh, design rules in good shape I have a hunch we're not and yep lines came up so we started moving some things around and we have some errors uh, one of the things you can do is you go like where are these errors uh, you, if you don't spot the the red marking you can actually click see on the text over in this rule and it'll show you which line is causing the problem and so these are just too close right there see that so we'll just take this guy and kind of nudge him over a little bit I think I'll move this one up while I'm here let's tie the next one for each part now that guy over there is a problem coming from our G and I think we could solve that by let's just get this out of here we just take our resistor and move it up a notch and that should take care of that I like to see my 
uh, traces straight. There is no electrical reason why they need to be, but I just like to see them straight. So uh, I'm moving that over, and then this guy can be straightened out as well. I think it's straight there. You, you probably saw me quite often bring this ruler out, and it it's just to tell. Do I have my lines straight? I I'm funny that way. I like to see them straight. But like I said, there's no electrical reason why they have to be. It just makes a very professional looking board when you do it that way. Well, we've corrected those. Is, is there any more? Let's find out. Design rules check. So it says we did it. We're, we're done. We solved the problems. Well, I'm ready to add some holes to the boards. Holes that could be used for mounting this thing. Uh, screw holes and standoffs. We have an item in our bin over here that will be a hole. Let's put it there for now. Let's take a look at it in the inspector and you'll see that um, this is a hole for an M2 screw and I want to make it a hole for an M3 screw. I generally use M3 screws so it needs to be a, a, a bit of a larger hole. I'm going to position it right up here on the board kind of in that in that space right there and I'm going to look at the numbers to see where it is so it's located at 1.590 I'm going to duplicate that hole and I will bring it down to the bottom here it looks like I have to scroll a little bit to get there and it's also at 1.590. Oh, look at both numbers are 1.590. That's interesting. So that's uh, that's where I want those two holes to be. Zoom out of here. Select this guy one more time. I'm going to duplicate him. We have a new one right here. It will go in this corner. So there, we've got those four corner holes where they belong. <laughs> I suppose you can see obviously that there's going to be some problems here. What would our rowdy design rule check say about this? Tell me first to select the board. And look at it run. Bingo. All these wires are problems. And you can see them red there. So these will be easy to fix. Like that. I can make it a little uh, better. And so, uh, I, I'm going to run the design rule check one more time to see if I've got this one far enough away from that hole. And I don't care about the others. I know that they are not going to be right. Once again, we will select the board. But the important thing is there's no red in here. So, that worked for there. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and fix the other four corners. Um, this is pretty much the same process. And then we have one more thing we want to talk about. See you soon. Let's run that design rule check one more time. Look at there. We are done. As I said earlier, my plan is to install these panels on the back side of the board, but the back side of the board will also contain little mounds of solder and the end pieces of the lead that I clip off of the resistors and the panels themselves. So I'm not going to be able to 
put those panels down flush with the surface. I need to raise them up a little bit. So I'm thinking that an easy way to do this would be to use these little nylon standoffs. I'll put them on the PCB and use them simply as a surface to push the displays against and then when I solder them everything should be held tight. So I'm going to need some holes for these as well. They are also M3 screws so I can use the same size holes that I just put on the corners of the boards but I'm going to position them in groups of three under the panels and uh, I'll need holes for those. Okay, we're good to go. There's one last thing to do here, and it's kind of a printed circuit board tradition. It has to do with the traces and their corners. Uh, historically, we avoid 90 degree angles on these traces, and some people sometimes think that it has to do with the signal traveling through the trace and having to make an abrupt 90 degree turn. That's probably not quite so much an issue. It may actually have some effect with some very, very high frequency circuits, but it's not going to be an issue with what we're doing here. It has another purpose, a very good one, and it has to do with keeping the trace laid down on the, the, the substance of the printed circuit board itself. When you bring traces to a 90 degree corner, that's a vulnerable spot. It's a place where the trace can possibly peel off. Now that's very, very unlikely with the quality of work that we are going to see from JLC PCBs. They, they have a nice uh, solder mask that goes over as a final coating on the board. And that solder mask is going to hold those traces down. So traces peeling off with a product like theirs is probably just not going to happen. But it's a tradition in laying out the board. So if you're proud of your work and you're showing it to other people, people who uh, are familiar with the business, if they see that you have taken care of your corners and you have two 45 degree angles instead of one 90 degree angle, it's, it's kind of a sign that maybe you you know what you're doing and so um, it just looks good it looks professional so I'm going to go in now and finish up this board by dressing up my 90 degree corners and just kinda taking the sharp point off we'll do that uh, then we'll be just about ready to submit this board to JLC PCBs and uh, look forward to having it come back Well, I think that takes care of all our corners. As we get near the end of this project, there's something that I think is pretty important to do that will save you a lot of trouble in the future. And that is when you're creating protoboards and you send them off to be made at a company like JLC, PCBs, they come back. It's a good idea to have printed on that board some information that will help you document what it was you were doing when you did it, and especially if there's going to be various versions of that project. You might as well start that right from the beginning. Here I'll show you what I mean. I think it's a good idea to add a label to your board someplace that will document who made it and when it was made. So I'm just going to put my amateur radio call sign in here. And, um, and then I'm going to put a date on there. And today's date is the 5th of January, so I'll just go 01.05.19. And we can position this um, somewhere on the board, like so. Um, and that would be a, a way to document, you know, 
what's going on. Find a spot, you can adjust the size. But that will tell you what it is. If you want to add a version for this thing, um, maybe that's a good idea uh, as well. I'll just make another one here. Let's document this as um, let's call it eight digits. Rev A. Maybe I'll put a dash in there. Eight digits Rev A. And then if I come back and I I do this uh, again sometime, I might need to. I can just change the the Rev number. I'll put that right there for now. Now you might have a uh, desire to add a picture or an image to the silk scene of the printed circuit board. And I think having already practiced this, I'll do a full video on exactly how to do it. But I'll show you here what we're going to do is we have a item over here in the bin that is for silk screen image. And we just bring that over here on the board. And something that's worth noting on all of these images, you're seeing black lines on our board. When this comes back from the fab house, all of those lines are going to be white. So everything that's black here will be white on the board when you get it back. So if we go into the inspector here, you'll see that we have a button that will allow us to upload an image. And I've created a, an image for this project and it needs to be a bitmap and it should be monochrome. Let me show you this window that opened up off screen and I have it here. What I've done is I've gone with the logo from JLC PCBs. They're sponsoring this video, this series of videos, and they're supporting me in making these boards. So I'd like to maybe show off the fact that these boards were made by JLC PCB, and I'm proud to have that on display here in my ham shack. Some people can see where I got these boards. So I'm going to go ahead and put their logo on it. They didn't ask me to do that. This is my own idea. But I'm just going to bring this down to a size that's more manageable. And now let's zoom in on the whole project. And you'll see that we have it here. And I'd like to put this on the other side of the board. Remember that our, our board will be flipped over and our, our displays are going to be um, over on the other side. So I'm going to use this inspector here. It says over here that this is silkscreen top that, that we're doing this on. But I'm going to go to switch to silkscreen bottom. And what looks like it looks like it's gone and went back to the original size again when I made that switch. So we will have to bring it down here and put it back up here. We have a tool right here that will allow us to view things from either side of the board. So let's switch to view from bottom. And we can home in and take a look at this image that is here on our display. Let me also switch this to just the bottom layer. Now we have something that we can work with and get an idea of where we want to put it and how big we want to make it. And so it's, I want it to be displayed kind of down here in the corner of the board. I think that'll look nice right there. Remember what is black here is going to be white. So there we have that. That should come out in the silk screen. Let's uh, hide some of the other stuff so you don't see it. If I come down here, let's we'll hide the top silk screen so that it's not um, affecting what we're seeing here. There we have that there. I think uh, as long as we're working, imagining this now being the front of our final board because this is where the display the numbers are going to be displayed. I think I'll put my call sign on this as well, kind of in this corner. So I'll just bring out a uh, text window here. And look, it's backwards. That's because it automatically put it on the top. Let's change it to the bottom. And when we do, that reverses it for us. And we can put my call sign in there. 
and I will bring it down here. I think I want it to be the same height as those letters. So I'll just do this. But I'll put it over on this side. There. That looks nice. So that should be the silk screen on the bottom of the board. Now if I go back to view it from the top, you see everything that we just did is reversed here because it's on the other side of the board. So that's how we get those graphics on there. This concludes the PCB layout portion of this series of videos. In the next video, we'll take this project to the next step, the exciting part. We'll make the final preparations for the PCB. We'll create the Gerber files. We will compress them, zip them up, and we will upload them to jlcpcb.com and wait for our boards to come home. You should automatically move on to the next video. If you don't, you'll find it in the playlist below. And hey, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.